And this is actually also a two-stage system, and that's where it's different from what's out there. As you can probably imagine, if you go 250 kilometers down the straightaway, whether you break one-tenth or three-tenths later, that has a huge impact on track. What I'm trying to tell you is, if you want the real race car feeling, and if you really want to save time on your lap times, if you want to be quicker, if you want to be able to brake harder and later, then I do believe uh, that the Invicta pedals is the best option on the market right now. Hey guys, my name is uh, Andre. I'm the CEO and uh, founder of Acetech. And uh, today I'm going to uh, teach you a lot about braking how a brake system works, and especially how the Acetec uh, hydraulic uh, Invicta uh, brake pedal system works. Uh, we have gotten a lot of interesting questions and, and comments lately. Thank you. And I want, to, I want to address some of them by trying to educate you a little bit about how does a brake system actually work in a race car? Why do we want a, a hard pedal versus a soft pedal? Why do we want a short travel pedal versus a long travel pedal? And then I'll try to look a little bit about um, the products that are on the market today. I'm not a reviewer, I would be biased anyway, but nevertheless, I'm going to show you some of the systems uh, that's available on the market today and, and where Acetech is different. Then it's really up to you whether you believe that's an advantage to you or not, but I, I want to, to highlight it at least. I think that the best way or the best place to start is uh, actually to see what a brake system for a car consists of. What we have here, is uh, the brake cylinder or the master cylinder. And uh, you activate this rod by pushing the pedal, just like in a uh, normal sim racing uh, setup. And then you are pushing a hydraulic fluid, that's the brake fluid, through the brake line into the brake caliber, where in this case we have four pistons. Inside the brake caliber, you have brake discs. You can see they are hard as a rock, they are not really soft. And then in between the discs, Sorry, in between the, the brake pads, you have the brake disc or the brake rotor. This is attached to your wheel, so when you drive down the straightaway, this is spinning. And when you then press the, the brake pedal, the caliber pistons are coming out, squeezing on the brake pads, and the brake pads uh, have friction. And they clamp to the brake disc, and that way you stop your car. That's the fundamentals of how a hydraulic brake system works. There are a lot of variants and with ABS and so forth, but the fundamentals are the same in all of them. To show this hydraulic brake system in the real world, I've actually taken out a gear card here uh, because that's small and it's easy to understand. Now, if I want to brake, I obviously push the brake and you can see the wheel stopped and it's locked. The brake rotor is locked. Now I release again and as you will see, the brake pads are obviously not touching, but they're also not fast-based away. It's not like they retract a millimeter. We are talking about hundreds of a millimeter, just enough uh, not to drag. And if you look at the feeling of this brake pedal, it has like two stages. It has a soft stage where nothing really happens, and then it has a hard state. And now it's, the brake pedal is hard as a rock. And the reason for that is you cannot compress a fluid. So when the pistons are touching the pads and the pads are touching the disc, there is no more travel in the brake pedal. If there is, there's air in the system. No race car driver ever wants air in his system because that means the pedal will be long, travel long, and it will be soft as a sponge. So that's really the, again, the hydraulic ABC on how a hydraulic brake system works on a, in this case, a go-kart. But let's just move to the race car for a second. So. This is an Audi R8 GT3 uh, uh, race car and uh, I'm now pushing the brake pedal. And again, you can see I can move the pedals like one, two centimeter and then it becomes rock hard. And that's exactly the same reason as in the go-kart. There is some play in, in everything here and the calibers, uh, the pistons in the calibers have to travel to the brake discs, etc. And that translates into one, two centimeters of travel. But now I'm really pushing all my force uh, against the fluid, which cannot be compressed. And as such, uh, the brake pedal is rock hard, exactly as any race car driver would want it. Since we don't have brake discs and brake pads in a, in a simulator, 
we use uh, a slave cylinder that we integrated into the Invicta design. And this is actually also a two-stage system. And that's where it's different from what's out there that, uh, as I'll show you a little bit later, what's out there today, you may have a master cylinder and you may have a, um, a slave cylinder, but you don't really have this two-stage system. As you can see here, we have the elastomer here. In our pedals, the only thing the elastomer does is to determine how hard is the soft stage before you engage the second stage. So if you want a really soft pedal before it turns hard, you put in the softer one, and if you want a really hard feeling, you put in the, the hard one. But it will actually not change the travel of the pedal itself. The travel of the pedal will always be the same. Like we saw in the Audi, uh, the, the, the pedal travel is around two centimeters measured on the faceplate of the pedal. Now I'm not so strong, I can compress this with my hand, so I, I took it out of the Invicta system here. But what you will see when I press the pedal now is, you have the soft stage, just like under a go-kart and just like in the race car. And then when this disc hits the bell here, you engage stage two. But it's not just a mechanical stop because it's on the slave side. So in the master cylinder, I'm now pushing against the hydraulic oil just like in the race car, just like in the go-kart. Okay, so what I just described is not a simulation. It is like in a real race car. I think when some of you ask the questions, we have hydraulic pedals, we cannot really tell the difference. You are right, as I'll show you in a second. But on our system, you are not right because we have this two-stage setup. All right, what we have here is uh, actually a pedal set from a real race car that's converted into sim racing. You uh, recognize the master cylinder. Here is a slave cylinder made for a clutch, uh, a pressure sensor and some brake lines. And uh, the fundamental idea is the same. You push the master cylinder, the slave cylinder retracts, and then you squeeze a piece of rubber. But the difference to the Invicta system here is really you don't have the two-stage setup. This is one stage and, and the way to demonstrate it is if I push the brake, as you can see, I just keep squeezing the white rubber. Of course, I can put in a harder rubber, then it's tougher to squeeze. But the idea is the same. There's no mechanical stop. You don't have the two stages. You have a soft pedal and a very long pedal. So you don't get this sensation of pushing the hydraulic forces when the discs are fully compressed by the brake pads. What I'm trying to do is to tell you the differences between what's on the market and what we're doing here at Ace Tech SimSports. This is, uh, I guess, in the true meaning of the word, a simulator set of pedals. And if you look at the brake pedal here, I can squeeze it. Again, it also don't have the, or it doesn't have the, the two-stage system. It has this little uh, slip between the brake pads and, and the, the disc, but this really soft sensation, and then it turns rock hard, is not really there. So this is a, a long, and in my opinion, also a soft brake pedal. But the fundamental, let's call it issue, in this case is it doesn't have the hard stage. It never turns really hard. It's really just a question, how much do you squeeze the elastomer? So in this case, I would say spending the extra money to go hydraulic over this is a waste of money because they do exactly the same. As uh, those of you who listen in school will know, hydraulic oil cannot be compressed, a fluid cannot be compressed. So whether you do it mechanically or hydraulically makes no difference. We also have travel in the beginning, a couple of centimeters uh, measured on the, on the plate, and then it turns rock hard and you're pushing right to the fluid or, or on the fluid. That's really the difference. But what does it actually mean? I think the, the biggest difference is that we are, we are racers here at Asetec. The, the, the Asetec Simsports Audi there won the Danish Endurance uh, Championship uh, last year. So I would like to think that we know at least a little bit about uh, what we're doing here at Asetec. The reason a brake pedal is hard is because then you can do proper trail braking. You can use your muscle memory to trail brake because your brain is actually capable of time and over again going into a corner to recall how much did I actually push it. Going into a corner where you want to trail brake, if it's soft, you cannot use your muscle memory. 
Then you would use your brain to try to recall a position. And you're just not able to do that. So that's why you want um, a hard brake pedal. The hard brake pedal, so hard is it requires muscle to push it. That means you can trail brake. The next thing is, why is it we then want a short brake pedal? A short brake pedal means it only has a very limited travel. So there's two elements here, short and hard. The short brake pedal is about timing. When you go 250K down the straightaway, you don't use your muscle memory or your memory as such to figure out when to brake. You have a visual marker. But when I push this, let's say it took me one tenth of a second from initially hitting it until it builds up pressure. One tenth of a second. Let's say I do the same now. Now we have a soft and a long brake pedal. I do the same. Perhaps that took me, I don't know, three, four tenths of a second. So you can brake later if you have a hard and a short brake pedal. As you can probably imagine, if you go 250 kilometers down the straightaway, whether you brake one tenth or three tenths later, that has a huge impact on track. My name is Christian Dump, and I'm simulation and development engineer here at Acetec. I'm responsible for this lab and testing room and also race engineer on the company's Audi R8 GT3. In terms of a short and a long brake pedal, your leg can only break with a certain amount of force. Now, we're all stronger or less strong than each other, so there's only a fixed amount of speed we can apply into the brake pedal. So if we say this is the speed I can put into the brake pedal, if the brake pedal stop is closer, then of course the total amount of time it'll take to brake is shorter than if I have a long brake pedal. And when you're going 250 or 300 kilometers an hour, then that small one tenth or four tenths of a second compared to a long and a short brake pedal is very important. These small tenths of a second when you have to hit the brake is very, very important. If we take an example like turn one at Barcelona, you have an entry speed into the corner of around 285 kilometers an hour and you want to reach 135 kilometers an hour at the apex. So a short brake pedal means that you can get full actuation on the brake pressure earlier because it doesn't have to move as far as a long brake. And with the Invicta pedal here, my brake marker is quite late because I can get the brake pressure up nice and early, trail brake into the corner and get early on the throttle. Whereas you saw on the competitor pedals, I have to brake earlier because that amount of travel around 85 millimeters is that much longer and means that I lose a couple of tenths going into turn four at Barcelona. Okay, so my mission here today was to uh, show and tell and explain to you what the differences are between uh, the way we are doing it, the way we are taking actually advantage of using hydraulic system, and then uh, what uh, some of our colleagues uh, in the market uh, are doing. What I'm not trying to do is to tell you that you should buy our pedals because I believe they are better than the competition. What I'm trying to tell you is if you want the real race car feeling, and if you really want to save time on your lap times, if you want to be quicker, if you want to be able to brake harder and later, then I do believe uh, that the Invicta pedals is the best option on the market right now. You saw how the brake system worked. You saw the, the disc, the pads, the brake lines, the master cylinders. We were up in our lab. Christian showed you how much time you can actually gain by braking harder and later and having a short travel brake pedal uh, versus a long brake pedal. And that was really my ambition for, uh, for today to, to show uh, the differences and then you can make an, an educated uh, choice on your own. Thanks guys.